Welcome to the Five Seven Podcast. I'm your host Pre, and today I am joined by my co-host. Yes, yes. What's up? <laughs> On the show today, we've got a professional boxer at the light middleweight division and former IBA lightweight champion Ruben, the modern day warrior Galvin. Ruben, how you doing, man? I'm I'm doing good, guys. How y'all doing tonight? Good. Where are you located at? I'm all right. I'm in Whiting, Indiana, right now. Whiting, Indiana. 20, 25 minutes from downtown Chicago. <laughs> it's kind of funny whenever uh, people talk about, you know, Indiana. You know what what your location is in Indiana. Everyone always says, you know, like, oh, I'm about 35 minutes out from Chicago. You know, kind of relation to to where they are. You know. Yeah, because obviously we're. I think we're all considered Chicagoans because I I travel a lot, and people ask me where are you from. If I tell them. You know, let's say White in Indiana, well, where's that? If, obviously, if I say right. Chicago, they're like, oh, okay. So I say like a suburb. I'm a suburb of, of uh, Chicago, only Indiana side. Chicago land area. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So, modern day warrior, where did that come from? Um, gr- 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 growing, up as a, growing up as a kid, I watched, uh, my pops was into wrestling and boxing. And uh, so we, we, we would sit there and watch, you know, wrestling with him well a little bit in my back in my day as a child uh wcw was uh was pretty popular and uh there was a uh wrestler the uh, you guys probably heard of him the von eric brothers anyways um carrie von eric was my favorite wrestler growing up and um, i'm sure you guys heard the story he passed away blah 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 and um so i always when i when i when i turned pro which i never intended to turn pro but turned pro and I had a couple of friends. Well, what's going to be your boxing name? You know, what's going to, I, 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 I don't really get into that kind of stuff, but I get it. Like, you know, get a name. So anyways, I thought I actually started at Empress back in 96 and I asked a bunch of, I did a little survey in the lunchroom. Hey guys, what do you guys think about this name? And everybody chose, uh, chose that game hey man it's, it's a good thing that they didn't uh, they weren't serving any sausages that day otherwise you'd have been like the hot dog master reuben galvin <laughs> <laughs> the, chorizo, man. The, the man with the ma, el, el master de chorizo <laughs> <laughs> but you'd have to have the same guy announce your name every time because mm-hmm. you know you wouldn't want to have like that drop off you know because you need that dramatic effect you know you know what and and, and i and, and i and i have fought in uh vegas in um, Atlantic City, and I want to say, I want to, I want to, I want to say, it was Atlantic City. Um, Michael Buffer come come into my dressing room, talking to me, and hey, what's up, Buffer? How are you doing? And I, said, I and I told him, I didn't know you were gonna be here. He goes, Yeah, man, I flew in just to announce your fight. And I'm like, Oh, that's awesome. Thanks for lying to me, but yeah, that's great. And he said, You know, what's your what's your what's your what's your intro name? What's your boxing name? And I told him. And somehow, somewhere, I don't even know who did it, but someone wrote Superman instead of the modern day warrior. And when I'm in the ring fighting, getting getting announced, you know, who wouldn't get hyped up? Michael Buffer, and you know, gonna introduce you. And uh, yeah, no kidding. It actually, it actually threw me off. I'm like, no. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm a Superman fan, but that comic that has nothing to do with fighting. And the, at that moment, it was I was I was I was on the I was I was on the, I was on the biggest stage of my life at that time and it comes out superman i'm like man it kind of kind of bothered me already just from the from the from the start but anyway um superman once and the rest has been uh the modern day warrior i made sure after that that we <laughs> they used that name i was announced by that name that's great man how have you know when you first started boxing what would you say is um like a main main inspirational factor for doing so um, I want to say like when when I when I when I when I first started locally, there was uh, Marty Jakubowski, his brother Eric Jakubowski, uh, local guys uh, Gary Kirkland, and then obviously I'm sure everybody knows of uh, Andrew Matt Freddie. Well, they they were they were um, up and coming at that time, and I was just you know a rookie. And uh, this is another. Another thing that I was I was impressed with, and a lot of gyms you go to in the city, they don't let the amateurs fighters spar with the pros. It's just it's 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 you can't do it. No, never accepted. 
anyway, he, here 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 at the at the Whiting Boxing Club, you can spar with anybody you want to. Well, I felt like that that was that was to my advantage in a sense because I would get in there with Angel Matt Freddie, Art Zakabowski, Gary Clinton, the names I just I just read off to you guys. And these guys would literally pound me. Like they would no mercy. It's, it's, I'm going to tell you guys something right now, and you can ask any other boxer, professional boxer, or a boxer that's been boxing for a while. The best fights you'll ever see are in the gym, not on TV. I mean, don't get me wrong. You, you, obviously, you see some wars, Gotti, Gotti and Ward. You know, those are some good fights. Castillo and, and, and um, Diego Corrales, I'm sorry. Um, that was a great fight. Yeah, that was a, a good one. Fights. And that that was a war, but the the best fights you'll see are, are are in the gym. And me, it got to the point where I these guys were pros, and they had obviously way more experience than I did. Um, I'm an amateur; they couldn't knock me down, and I started running my mouth because that's that's I, I've always been that way. That I I like to talk crap a little bit, and um, it got to the point where I think my trainer at the time, Dennis Hardesty, had said, you know, you guys can't even heard him nothing i'm not, and i you know obviously me in the ring i mean yeah you ain't chopping me well now here we go <laughs> oh you know best off so here we go now they start literally swinging for the fences and i'm and i'm and i'm you know defense i'm i'm slipping and and i'm sure you guys don't know this but sometimes you you can throw a right hand and instead of me ducking completely or blocking it you slip but you just you just tilt a little like if you're throwing a right hand at me i tilt a little to my left and when, 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 when I do that, I can hear a little a swish from the, from the breeze of him missing me. And that, and that as a, as a, as a, as a fighter, let's say we're sparring and we're, we're friends or we're sparring. And I hear that breeze really solid. I know you're trying to hurt me. Like you're really trying to hit me. And like, wait a minute, dude, we're sparring here. Now, if you want to spar, let's spar. If you want to go, let's go. I don't think you guys get that difference or not, but, um, these guys were starting to wing at me and I, they never could drop me. But more of the story is they made me better because they did beat the crap out of me and they would destroy me. And guess, 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 guess who's at the gym the next day? Me. I've got to ask you one question about that. You, you said you like to talk a little crap. So I read something on an, on an article about you on BoxingNews24.com. It was in which Jose Antonio Rivera said of you, I hear he comes to fight and that he likes to fool around a bit to try and get in his opponent's head. Fool around. I mean, what does Rivera mean exactly by fool around? And like you're saying, you like to uh, get into people's heads. Like, what do you do to get in people's heads? I talk a little bit and I, uh, I dance around like I – Bolo punch. Um, obviously, I'm sure you guys know. You guys heard of the Superman punch, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I, I, uh, I've, done, I've done that a couple of times. And actually, some of the refs are, are like confused. They're like, they want to tell me not to do that. But wait a minute. Where's a, it's, it's a punch. I don't understand how it's illegal. It's not illegal. Anyway, so I would do that. I would. Um, but like, the, but like, what exactly? I, I, I got to know, man. I got to know. What exactly are you saying? Like, are you telling these guys, listen, yo mama, man, yo mama. Are you saying yo mama jokes? Or what are you, what are you telling these guys? You know, kind of like no, baseball, I, you know, where you see guys talking, talking on baseball. And, you know, they're talking to the refs and then, you know, they're, they're walking. Somebody gets beamed and, they're, you know, they're talking to the pitcher and the pitcher's jaw jacking back. You know, like what's going on? And, and don't get me wrong. Sometimes, obviously, they're going to they're gonna land a punch. But it's like, OK, that's as hard. Really? Did you just hit me as hard as you could? And I'll tell them, hey, man, next time put your, put your purse down and hit me. And hit me with a roll right hand. <laughs> or, you know, I, 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 can see, I can see it coming. I can see your shoulders. Your shoulders are telling me you're about to throw right hand. Too slow, too slow. And I get out of there, you know, or I shuffle a little bit. And then at that point, that's where I'm on my defense and, and make sure that I'm, I'm defensive, if you will. So when they throw something offensively, and that's, and that's a lot of things. Like obviously, I don't know if I'm the first fighter you guys ever interviewed, but as a, as a as a as a as a as a fighter, that's one thing I look at as a as a as my opponent. I look at their shoulders, I look at their hand. You know, obviously their hands. Some they call it telegraphing it, and if I can see they're telegraphing that punch, that's my advantage. I, like I said, I watch the shoulders. If the shoulders move first, then I know that's coming. That's why you guys ever heard the the, the term faint. Make sure you start fainting because fighters like me, we could pick that up. I've been, I've been fighting over 20 years. 
so I can see a normal Joe, his shoulder move a little bit, and I'm already out of the way, or I know the punch is coming. And uh, and one of one of one of my favorite things to do was to if you threw a jab at me, I would block it with my right hand, and I'd come over the top and hit you with the right hand on the ch- on the chin. And I, you know, I would say, you like that? You like that? There's more. There's more. And it just talk. You know, I, I want to me. I, I feel like this, and I'm sure you guys will agree with me. If I can get in your head and get you, because everybody has a, a, a somewhat of a game plan. You know, uh, what kind of fighter? Like that gentleman said that about me. He comes to fight and he talks trash. So whoever, 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 let's say he was training someone, he would train him. Hey, look, he does this. He says this. That's what we're training for. Let's get ready. Don't let him. Don't let him get in your head. And that's what I try to do. Because if I, this this might not make sense to you guys, but at, at boxing. If I can get you mad, that throws you off. Now you're just trying to knock me out. Now you're just winging right hand, left hook. You're just swinging for the fences. And don't get me wrong. I'm sure if you hit me, I'm going to feel it. But already, that's my plan. I want you to do that. And then if, you, if, I, if I'm slipping them and I'm blocking them, you're getting tired. It's, you get more tired by missing. But if it comes to that and the guy's really quick, then I, then I just you know, pray I can block it. But more times than none, you, you, you want them to miss to get them, get them winded. Get them out, get them out of their game plan. Have have you uh, have you always done that, or was that something that maybe you learned as you moved on in your career? I've always been that way. Um, since I was a kid, man, I I just listen. I'm gonna say this first. I'm not a tough guy. I'm not a bully. I'm I'm, and it's easy to talk about yourself, but I, but I really I never believed that I was that type of person. But I always. <laughs> I always wanted to defend the um, kids that, that weren't fighters, the kids that were special needs, that were different than everybody and everybody wanted to make fun of. I I wanted to defend them. And I, I would literally, I don't care how big you are, what you look like, I just wanted to fight. So if 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 you picking on, you know, little Billy or little Timmy, I'm going to defend little Billy or little Timmy because you're a bully and I just, always like to fight so i got uh i got kicked out of seventh grade for uh for fighting in the showers hit this kid with a left hook and a right hand he was done and uh we were standing there naked and here comes the gym coach <laughs> and uh, he came in right when we we're my, right when i was swinging at him and he took me to the office in the hand towel and i uh that was that was my that was my career in public schools and I got sent to a, a private Christian school. Dude, you know? that is like that's that's like what you would consider like a Spartan fight, you know, with your balls just swinging in the <laughs> swinging in the wind, you know, <laughs> fighting, fighting another guy, you know, with his balls just swinging in the wind, you know. I mean, that's 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 hardcore. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, and I'm not saying listen, I never seen no one get killed, but I did grow up in in a pretty pretty tough neighborhoods over here in uh, North Hammond, and in a lot of lot of lot of gangs gang activity with me growing up but i never i never joined the gangs um but i did run around with uh, a couple of them so now that i'm older that old saying you are who you hang out with well i'll never claim that i was in a gang but i did hang out with them because that was just my cousins and and, and my close friends that's what they did but um i never really was a was a bully i just like to fight if that makes sense so if someone pick on someone let's let me let me let me defend them. I mean, I'm not saying I was always right by doing that, but you know, I just this is how I, I was. I li- I really like to fight. Well, the, definitely, yeah, definitely. That's that's the truth. You said you've been fighting for 20 years. Wikipedia says you had 50 fights, and and some of those have been on HBO, pay per view, ESPN, Showtime, in places like MGM Grand versus Cesar Chavez Jr., Zab Judah, Marty Jukabowski, and even uh, Bernice. Christensen, who was 0-21, by the way, and you beat the shit out of him. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Vernice Christian, Kristen. Oh man, he was 0-21. Oh, okay, and 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 then probably, if I remember right, um, sometimes, and this is back in the day too, a lot because you know I had to grow up in the system, and and sometimes some fighters wouldn't wouldn't be able to make it to the show. Uh, the, 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 I say the, the scheduled opponent, if you will. So, hey, sudden such is going to fill in just so we can fight. And to me, 
I'm going to fight anybody because <laughs> I trained already. And let's be honest, I'm getting paid decent money. So I, if I, if I don't fight, I'm not getting paid. I think there was one time I had fought on, uh, on, on an ESPN show and I was considered the swing bout, which means this, mm-hmm. the main event takes place. And if the main event happens to go three rounds, they, that TV time is, you, you still have TV time. So I was filling in if that, if that main event didn't happen or it was over, then I would fight. And I don't know if you guys ever heard of Eric Morrell, but Eric, not Eric Morrell is Eric Morrell. I believe he's from Wisconsin. And we, we were fighting, we, we were fighting at the university of Wisconsin and, uh, I was at bout. So, um, he, he ended up dropping Eric ended up dropping him in the first, second round. They're like, Hey, Galvin, start warming up. We think you're going to come on. Long story short, I didn't end up fighting that night. They paid me for shadow boxing in the locker room. Dude, I never, I never stepped foot in the ring. So that's the, uh, that's the best fight I've ever had in my career. I give those dudes a lot of credit, man. I mean, like the guys who, uh, the guys who, you know, they're like, hey, can you can you fight this dude because uh, the other guy came in overweight or something, you know, and the guy's got like a week t- a week to to get ready for the fight. That was me and Chavez Jr. When I fought Chavez Jr., thank God Horseshoe um, had sponsored me. They would they they paid for all my uh, training gear. I wore their shorts with their name on them. And that Sunday, I think it was mon- Monday. I'm sorry, Monday they had they had contacted my agent. And he had call, called me while I was at work. He said, hey, man, they just called uh, They just called to you. Who called to me? Bob Arum. I go, what do you mean? He's like, he wants you to fight. Who? He says, Chavez Jr. I was like, when? This Saturday. I'm like, no. He's like, yeah, somebody that he was supposed to fight had backed out. Are you interested? And my first question was, how much? And he tells me the amount, which was, I was almost floored. I'm like, yeah, yeah, well. I asked, and this is my next question, who's the main event? And he says, uh, Arturo Gotti versus Floyd Mayweather Jr. What? <laughs> I'll, I'll do this fight for free. Let's go. You know, let's go. Yeah, no kidding. So, uh, I went to Atlantic City that week. I, I, I left Tuesday, and I had to go out there Tuesday for t- do all my medicals. Um, they do all kinds of medicals. So I did all the medicals and did media and... Um, Matter of fact, me and uh, me and Mayweather had some problems with our with our medicals, and me and Mayweather were in a room together by ourselves, uh, talking and just hanging out. This was man, two thousand five, I want to say it was. So it was, and that, he that hadn't was fought. He hadn't fought De La Hoya yet, had he? I don't believe so. No, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. The the I fought. I fought the first time I fought in Vegas. He was the main event against uh, Jose Luis Castillo. And in my opinion, Jose Luis Castillo beat Mayweather Jr. that night. But then they rematched, and then Mayweather obviously trained and then destroyed him. But I felt like Castillo did enough to beat him that night. So I had met Mayweather that night. But like I said, I'm a fighter too. So wherever, wherever the fighters had to go, we were all together. And uh, that's when I seen him in Atlantic City, he remembered me and we just picked up, you know, conversation, how you been, blah, blah, blah. But um, my thing was Arturo Gotti was my was my favorite fighter. And I met Gotti and and I I was I'll never forget that day. Gotti says, what's up, Delvin? He called me by my last name. He actually obviously he remembered me. He had fought Angel Manfredi and I went with Manfredi at the time. I was Manfredi's one of Manfredi's sparring partners for quite a bit of time back then and um oh so i went with manfredi to that to that in atlantic city and manfredi ended up beating uh he ended up stopping Gotti, and uh Gotti remembered me from from that back then anyway that fight in atlantic city that's when i fought uh chavez jr and that was probably one of the best best times i did lose to chavez but like i said i got that like you just said you know i give those guys credit i appreciate that Peter. but um that was I got the phone call Monday, left Tuesday, and I ended up fighting Saturday. And the night of the fight that, that I fought Chavez, he outweighed me by 27 or 28 pounds the night of the fight. And, man, that I Holy feel smoke. every punch. Woo-hoo. Wow. Yeah, he, was, he was a big guy. I think he's yeah. done that, like, every single fight in his career, man. He's, like, always showed up to the, to the fight, like, 20 pounds overweight. 
well, he he was overweight tonight. The, the weigh ins and they it, it, it in boxing. I'm not saying like that because I love boxing. I'm not trying to down it, but I'm calling it is what it is. It's politics, man. He he was he was our probably that I've seen five pounds overweight, but they had him jump on the scale and jump right off. He's good. No, he's not. My trainer specifically is supposed to witness the other guy weighing in, and then you okay it as well as the commission. Well, they just said he he made the weight and they let him go. And that's wrong. You're not supposed to do that. But I get it. He's 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 the man, and I'm just some chump that's coming to fill in for whoever didn't didn't show up. You know, he's so. a freaking nobody, dude. If if his name would have been anything other than Chavez Jr., he he probably wouldn't even be a freaking boxer. Well, and I and I hate to say it, but I agree. But I I really thought when he fought Canelo Alvarez, I thought it was going to be a really good fight, and Canelo destroyed him. And yeah, Chavez he did. Jr is the bigger guy and he still got destroyed. Yeah. So he I, did. I, I'm going to have to agree with you there. Yo, speaking of Canelo, do you think he's, uh, he's quite protected in his current, uh, did you catch up the fight on this past Saturday? I did. I did. I did catch it. And everybody thought it was a boring fight. And honestly, he, he, he fought just like Mayweather. It was, it was his defense. I was so impressed with Canelo's defense because he literally was Mayweather. If you guys watch that fight, I don't know if you guys seen it or not, or you get a chance to check it out when it's finally on YouTube. Dude, his defense was 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 just like it was just wow. I'll be honest with you, dude. I think that they choreographed that fight like you know, like the whole train up. I think that they like camped together and then they did like a choreography for the fight because uh his his head work is has never been that good. Ever. In his entire career. Well, and then out of nowhere, and he's, and you know, he's like, a, he's like a defensive specialist. A defensive savant. <laughs> you, you, but here's the thing, as, as, a, as, a, as a fighter, you work on what, what your, your, your weak points are. And when he, I don't think I've seen the fight when he fought Mayweather. Matter of fact, I was at that fight. Um, he destroyed, he, Mayweather destroyed him because Canelo didn't move his head. So I, my, this is my opinion. I believe probably Canelo watched that fight over and over and over because that was his first loss, number one. Number two, at where, where he's at in his career and where he's at at the level he is at, you can only do things to get better. And I, and I believe, this is my opinion again, I have to work on my head movement. And, and how many, I don't know how much you guys watch boxing, but how many, how many Mexican boxers really have great defense? There's not many because a lot of Mexicans want to go in there and just throw punt let's just throw you know yeah last man standing which makes makes you know you 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 get a top mexican which you're obviously canelo right now and you say that how many mexicans want to watch that fight because they know i don't know if you guys ever heard the, the style it's considered a style of boxing i want a mexican style i want to fight mexican style which means you're going to go in there and just brawl you know i just want to go in and throw punches yeah. Yeah. You know, like if you think of Eric Morales, he never really moved his head too much, but he had his hands up like to, to block punches. Yeah. And he had a chin. <laughs> you gotta yeah, have a chin. Yeah. He had you a know. chin too. The, the uh, Morales Barrera fights were, were um, amazing. Yeah. Yes. Man, those were, those, those, whoo. And here comes Pacquiao. Man, that, those, those, all those guys, those eras were, were some good eras back in the so, day fighting. You know what I, I did a we did a podcast not too long ago. We were doing it on what was that one on Mike? The uh Errol Spencer Jr. and Mikey Garcia fight. Yep, yep. And yeah. we were talking about um I about how boxing seems to be in a lull. And like the, the era that we were talking that we were recently talking about, I would say is probably between like two thousand and two thousand and twelve. And it was like a really great era of boxing. And even before then, from nineteen, from like nineteen ninety to nineteen ninety to say two thousand was another great era of boxing. And so was yeah. say maybe like seventy two to yeah. I mean, honestly, man, you could probably say from like nineteen seventy two to like twenty twelve was like great boxing. It seemed like all of the best fighters wanted to fight each other. What do you think? Um, what do you think has happened in boxing that it's not like that anymore? Uh, honestly, and I know a lot of people say that boxing is die- a dying breed, this and that. It's the money. The money is unheard of nowadays 
I mean, look, 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 look at, look at, look at, look at, look at Mayweather and 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 Pacquiao. You know how much they made. Um, what did Mayweather clear three million? I think it was. Yeah. Three hundred million. Three hundred. I'm sorry. Three hundred million. I believe it was. Yeah, and but he's Pacquiao he's a, a he's an ex, uh, like an exception though. Well, but it's still. But here, here's here's my here, okay. So here's my question. You think, Frito, where's that money coming from? It has to come from somewhere. Yeah, fans paying the pay per view. I don't know if you guys heard about that, but that they're in. The, and I get you're saying the exception, but it's still how many? Give me a percentage you think, and this is a, it's just I'm not really asking you to answer this, but a percentage of people that watch that fight and now they're fans. Whether the fight was boring or Mayweather can't crack an egg, but it was still the environment, the the the, the moment, the time, everybody was all about it. How many how many fans generated from watching that one fight? It's like anything else, MMA. The, I don't the, think the that. Guys, yeah, I don't think that there's many. Right, Cheeto or well, I I think not many, but enough to keep it to keep it alive. Now, again, I don't. I, I might be biased because I like boxing. I used to box, but so I've heard the money. Coming, <laughs> the, the money. So, what do you say? I said yeah. So so I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> The 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 money's still coming in, and and honestly, I think I think uh, recently, uh, McGregor and Ronda Rousey were the first ones to clear a million dollars. Are you kidding me? In today's 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 athletes and today's generation, um, and, and the way the economy is today, shame on them. I'm I'm, I'm gonna say this, and, I, and I'm not racist by no means, but I'm gonna say this anyway. If Dana White was black, then he'd be crucified right now. <laughs> but yeah, he, he, yeah, probably. He's basically, Don King, Don King of 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 the UFC, and it's and I don't want to say MMA because MMA is what they do. UFC is the actual organization. He owns UFC. But well, actually, like, actually, the UFC sold, and they have they have new owners now. Correct. So he's kind of correct. like a puppet for like these guys. But um, you know, I, I, I would. Can you really say shame on shame on him? Or can you say shame on the uh, on the fighters for not uh, having better representation? I'm glad you said that because you are thousand percent correct. Uh, like like De La Hoya did, uh, Chuck Liddell, Peter Ortiz, any of those guys should have started their own their own their own, their own promotion of, of and the, um, correct come up promotion MMA. This is like like um what's the what's the what's the one that goes goes down now if you're not if you're not uh, you have seen anymore. You go Bellator. Bellator. Oh, Bellator, yeah. Bellator, yeah. Takes, Bellator takes all the older fighters coming out of the UFC. But they finally did something. And I'm not saying that Bellator is, is great, but they're doing enough to stay afloat and to stay on TV, you know, enough. So, I mean, it, it, it's a business. And I, and, and to, to answer your question, again, it, I, I think it's the money, man. It's it, it, like I think, I think it was kind of dangerous for Canelo to take this fight against Jacobs because this is his first fight fighting on what was that channel called? The Zone, Dazani, Dazen, aka the Zone. It's called the Zone. Yeah. It's pronounced the Zone, but it's D A Z N. Sounds like Dazen. Right. Yeah, that's what I right. used to call it. Dazen. Right. <laughs> so that 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 was, that was his first fight. You know, so it's like you really want to risk because I really thought. Jacobs had a really good chance, chance chance of beating him. I thought if Jacobs could take Canelo's power, that Canelo Canelo was in trouble. I think but this is actually his, his second. I think this is second though, right? Because I ordered the, I ordered both of them. I'm pretty sure this is the second one because I had the the Days In app before for something he was on. I mean, he was on like a a fight nobody cared about, possibly unless I'm mistaken. The paydays though, I mean, they were you know we ordered the pay per view. His last ones were like hundred over a hundred dollars, and now this one this, this last week was nineteen ninety nine for the whole month of pay per views. How are the box? And you had made that good comment of the where's the money coming from now? Even more so than ever. My question is where is that money coming from if the bigger pay per view buys aren't necessarily going to be there with all that money filtering in? Subscribers, but subscriber there, numbers, there, it's, and, and it's not I, based this, off of this, money anymore. I don't know, man. I think I think money money still matters. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, it but does. The, the, it does. The best, part, you know, you know why you think should run boxing or or, or UFC. And you guys are gonna laugh at me. Uh, Vince McMahon. Yeah, my Vince boy. McMahon, whether you like him or not, the dude knows how to make money, 
and he made yeah. that WWE channel. So I think these guys are piggyback, piggybacking off of him, and because the WWE network is killing it. I don't Ooh, know, the yeah. numbers, but they're, they're, they're whatever McMahon does, money follows him. He's he, he's just very he's a smart businessman, and I, and and the WWE is just off the charts. You know what I mean? They need to follow their kind of program, but again, it's 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 all money. It's all money. So here's here's my I'm trying to answer you, Pedro, again. <laughs> if you're gonna pay me five hundred thousand to fight, you know, later on down, why would I fight Bill and Ted over here and risk <laughs> that that big payday? As as a as an individual, me myself, I have to feed my family because at the end of the day, when 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 I'm when I when I'm done fighting, the Oscar De La Hoya, Bob Arum, uh, all these promoters I fought for, they, 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 and I'm not saying to be mean, it's a business. They don't care what I do after that. So again, you got to make what you have to make to support your family and, and think about your future. You know what I'm saying? When, when you're up that big. So at that, your hands are kind of tied. Well, I got to wait because if I fight this guy who's the, you know, Goliath over here, I'm going to make a hundred million if I fight him instead of fighting these two guys. So don't get me wrong. If me and this guy fought, we're going to, we're going to bat, we're going to have a blood and guts last man standing fight. But I'm only going to make a million dollars off of that fight. Why, why would I want to do that? Yeah. When I could make, you know, 50 million fighting, you know, Goliath over here. It's pretty much every man for themselves. Do what you can do, make what you can make, and hopefully you make enough that you can, you know, do something with it and then carry on another life or career or, or another job. Unless you're Mayweather or Pacquiao or Chavez Sr., you know what I mean? These mega De La Hoya, you know, those, 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 those are rare breeds and, and God bless them. They're, I'm, I'm happy for them. They're all successful. They're, they're all doing well. Good for them that they were able to, to make it, but not everybody can do that. Look at me, man. I work, I work a nine to five job. I have to go to the gym. When, when I fought Dev Judah, I was driving probably 45 minutes to Chicago in the morning to go spar with uh, David Diaz. You guys know who David Diaz is? Yeah, uh, double double former, D. Yeah, the, the former WBC world champion. Well, he had fought Dab Judah in the uh, Olympic trials, I believe, and beat him. So perfect for me to spar with him. He's a southpaw as well. Um, I sparred with Diaz for that fight. But again, what I'm saying is, I'm a part. I was a part time fighter. When I can go fight, I get like like the Chavez thing. Hey man, do you want to? It was rare when I was able to get a fight that I actually got to train got time to train for you know say you're fighting bill and ted whatever you're on an excellent adventure for lack of better terms do you always think you're winning the fight i mean do you always in your head say the the scorecard they had the letterman's card they got you down six rounds and it's the seventh round and you do you know in your head that you're losing a fight or do you always think that you're winning or you could possibly pull it out my trainer uh eric he never was one to Oh, you're winning. Even when I was winning, he's telling me I'm losing and kind of double edged sword. I, I liked it because it made me, if you will, I'm not saying that it wasn't trying, but it gave me more incentive, if you will. So, to, okay, I, I do that. I, did, I landed like 20 body shots and, you know, 30 left hooks. You tell me that wasn't good enough to win that round, you know? So I got to go in there and throw double that. I fought in New York and, um, Man, what is this guy's name? He was a Jewish, big time Jewish, Jewish guy, uh, Dimitri Solidus. And I fought him in his, uh, it was in the Jewish part of New York. And, um, dude, it was, it was amazing. So the first round, you know, it's you usually fill, fill out, see what they got, how they throw. First round's over and I go back to my corner and, and Eric always asks me, how do you feel? How was he? How hard did he hit? And I was like, man, this dude's got bricks in his gloves. Both of them, I go, yeah, dude, with, with whichever hand he hits me with, dude, I, <laughs> he hits so hard. Fourth round, how you doing? How you feel? How's he hitting? I go, he hits like a girl. And then what I, what, I, what I mean by that is it took me four rounds to get used to his power. So by the fourth round, when he was punching me, I didn't feel it. I, I, I guess I, I say like I, I, I came accustomed to it, like I got used to his power. And that, that takes a toll. That takes a lot, too, like someone hits you. You know what I mean? You got to you you honestly got to get used to feeling that power, and if you can if you can handle it, 
obviously you're gonna do the you're gonna do the round. You guys you guys you guys remember um Rocky when they both went to the hospital after the fight? Yeah. Oh that was, yeah. That was me. What do you want me to do? That was me and Toledo. We we both uh we both went to the hospital to get uh MRIs done because we were we were pretty much going at it. He beat me by decision, but um we were going at it there for a little bit. That dude hit so hard, dude. Man, he hit but again I got I got used to his power. And I didn't I, I knew I was losing that fight, but I'm not saying that I felt like I was in it, but I I, I I'm not going out. I'm going out swinging. So I'm just going to throw, you know, what I can. Obviously he was more talented than me. We were, I was in his backyard, but that, that to me, that gives me, I, I like being the bad guy. I like being booed. I like, cause I, again, modern day warrior, you might as well call me the road warrior because a lot of my fights were on the road and I was always the villain. If you will, I was always the bad guy, but I also felt like Rocky in a sense, at the end of the fight, win or lose, I actually made a lot of fans wherever I fought. And I think that comes into where that guy had said that I, that I'm a, I, I like to mess around in the ring, but I feel like, listen, if you're paying, you know, 200 bucks, 500 bucks, 25 bucks to watch, to come watch a fight, I want to entertain you if I can as well with the little things that I do. I fought dirty. I'm left-handed, but I fight right-handed. So my left foot in front of me, well, my, my left knee, I would hit their left knee with my left knee and kind of try to buckle them. And if I was able to buckle them a little bit, I, I'd, hit, I'd hit them with the left hook. Um, there were times where they would lay on the ropes and they do the, the rope-a-dope, if you will. They put their gloves up and just try to defend where I would pull their hand down. My right hand would pull their, their right hand down and hit them with the left hook. My left hand would pull their left hand down and hit them with the right hand. And a lot of referees would yell at me for doing that. But I'm not doing nothing wrong. I'm just moving his hand so I can hit him. And if he's not making a fist tight enough for me to, to defend himself, why can't I do that? And this is little, crazy. Little, this is little, like little, inside little, boxing. I like this. Correct. Correct. And, and, and that's one thing that I'm telling you, obviously. I, I learned all this in the gym. And again, if you guys could ever go to a gym and watch two guys almost similar styles, or one's got a chin like mine and gets pummeled to you see some wars in the gym. I mean, it's, it's just, that's, that's where it's at is the gym and the Whiting boxing club in the winter time. It was so cold in there. We, we had, it was brick walls. We didn't have any heat. We had a little, um, probably would be legal nowadays. They probably closed us down, but we had a little, little fire, um, pit thingy in there. <laughs> and we would, we, we would put our gear, our boxing gloves, all of our wraps, everything by the fire, let it warm up while we, while we got dressed. We let our, 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 our equipment thaw out. Seriously, really I'll thaw out because if I put my gloves on and I hit you with it, I, it's like hitting you with a weapon because it's so hard from the, from the cold of the gym. Wow. And then, and then in the summertime, in the summertime, that same gym, um, and I'm not exaggerating here, about 115, 120 degrees, in the gym, in the ring. Cause mm -hmm. again, it's just a brick building and tar roof, man, that heat was just chilling it, you know? So, I mean, the Whiting Boxing Club, man, dude, those were some, uh, Marty went on to win a, a pretty big belt. Uh, he was the USBA champion. Man, Freddie won, I think a WBE, WBU belt. Obviously he beat Gotti. Um, he beat some big name fighters. So I, I was in there with some, with some, I was, I was blessed, if you will, to grow up with these guys and have these guys beat me up. I was allowed to spar with the pros back then when I was an amateur. I won the Chicago Golden Gloves in 96. My phone started ringing. Hey man, you want to make some money? I'm like, no. What do you mean? Like, hey, we turned pro. No way. No, I'm not doing it. Come on, man. Make some money. Okay. <laughs> so I think the first fight I fought as a pro, I think I made 2,500 bucks. Thought I was rich. If you tried to pay me twenty five hundred bucks today, I wouldn't even beat you up in the alley. Or a shower. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> or the shower. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's just it's it, you know, I I now where I'm at in my life with, when it comes to boxing, no matter what my record is or how many fights I had or or, or 
you know, not everybody can be a world champion, unfortunately, but everything I've experienced in my life through, through my boxing career, I wouldn't change a thing. I really wouldn't. Even the losses. I mean, there was even a couple of fights where I was like, man, dude, if I'd have done this different, if I'd have, in the gym, I could have won that fight. There was no reason for you to lose that fight. I love the, I've been all over the world. I've been all over the nation. I've met so many people and, and, and I, I went to, uh, Canada. One of my friends was fighting in Canada and I literally had three grown men come up to me. Are you Ruben Galvin? Yeah. 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 Can we get an autograph? Can we take a picture? Are you kidding me, dude? I'm like, I'm not really anybody, but the fights that they see, they see me fight. They were, I, I, I left the impact on them. If you will, the memory, like man, this guy, he comes to fight. And I'm, I don't get into that kind of stuff, pictures and autographs and, you know, you're, you're a pro box. I don't, I don't really get into it. Don't get me wrong. It's nice. I, I love that, that I'm recognized, but it doesn't make a difference to me either way, but it does, it does feel great. It does feel really good to be recognized. And even if I get embarrassed or get a cold sweat and someone asks me for an autograph, I still do it and I still take pictures, but I still like it. it that part of it doesn't get me. Yeah. I think I, I think I do know a part that does get you, Mr. Galvin, and that would be with the ladies. I read the blogs, I read the tweets, I've seen a lot of various things, and uh, yeah, the I know tweets say it all. No, they do, man. Those old tweets are saying a lot, and uh, we those know old, you've those old MySpace posts, those old MySpace stuff. I seen your your top eight. It, it expanded to a top Spider twenty, I think. <laughs> <laughs> they say spiders ain't supposed to have sex. Um, I guess while you're training. Uh, you guys, you guys ever hear that where the girls weak in the knees, weak in the knees, weak in the knees, yeah, weak in the knees, yeah, yeah. Which that theory is incorrect, by the way. I don't think I see that. Sports science, they they did a a thing on that, and it, it's false. It's it's not true. That's another part of it that was hard to to deal with too. Uh, 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 I'm not saying it like that, but I am a man, and I'm gonna say this: women are worse than men when it comes to flirting and, and being blunt women are, I think because they can be but it's like do you fall into that trap or do you you know what am I here for that was my main thing what am I here for I'm here for for business but it's hard sometimes when you when when it's when it's right in front of you it's literally in your face I don't know if you guys know the, the Tommy Morrison um story he's the reason why all of us fighters have to get um tested for for blood work done to see if we have any diseases or uh, STDs or, you know, because I don't think you guys know this now. Any of AIDS or HIV? That. Yeah, I believe he had HIV. And um, he was fighting for a little bit like that. And obviously, if you guys know this, but obviously, if, if, if I'm cut and Bill and Ted are cut and we exchange blood, well, I'm going to get whatever he has and, 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 and he's going to get whatever I have. So we had to get, we had to get tested for all that stuff. And I'm, um, kind of glad that we did it's just more of a headache to go to go do it and then and then and then every time it was okay moment of truth you know i'm gonna know regardless if i if i have it or not whether i want to know it or not i have to know if i have it because i told him i'm gonna fight how crazy was that who, who would have thought that you know that we're, we're fighting here to make a, make a living and this guy got it hiv yeah that's like, nuts why, why am i gonna get it you know, why am I going to get it? Because this guy wants to sleep with every broad that comes. And I'm rusty, so I'm not talking bad about him. I'm just stating in general, you know, anybody that has it, I'm glad that they do. They do test for that. In uh, New York, New York, Vegas, and Atlantic City in California are the hardest. If you could pass their, all their, their physicals and blood work, like I feel like I'm going to live, I'm going to live like I'm 150 because I've passed their test. Like nothing. The, the only problem I ever had with those states were was my heart. I have a, I have an enlarged heart, and I always got um, they always made me run extra tests just to confirm it and I and make sure that you know I was okay. And I, I I've always been okay. It's just they can't. It wasn't enough to not let me fight, but it was enough to that they were they were concerned that I that my heart was enlarged. But that's the only that's the only problem I, I had ever run into with the with the with the big uh, big uh, promoters and big states of uh, fighting. How has your how has your outside life affected your boxing career? 
a lot. I, I think, I think, um, mainly my relationships. Um, I was with this girl, me and this one particular girl, Ju- uh, we were, we were together about 10 years and I, I traveled a lot. She was with me pretty much in the, in the, of the prime of, of my, of my fighting. And supposedly she'd hear girls in the, I would fight at the Radisson and she quoted, I'm quoting her. I heard this chick in the bathroom say that she wants to ask you, I don't cuss. So she said that for it. So I, I mean, I, you know, being on, being on that side of it, I guess the spotlight, it was hard for her to deal with and, and accept, but here's my thing. And, and my, and I will never forget this. I went to uh, Russia the fight and my daughter's birthday was um, they're having a party that weekend and I couldn't go. And my, my daughter was younger at that time. And I, you know, and I told her, baby, I can't make it to your party because I have to go out of town to go fight or I'd miss my son's all-star game or I'd miss my son's birthday or whatever my mama's birthday anniversary. This bottom line is this, if I'm going to miss stuff for my immediate family, and I don't mean no disrespect because if you're my girlfriend, obviously I think I love you. I'm sorry, but if I'm going to miss my immediate family's special moments or my, or my children's birthdays because I have a job, and then people don't realize that it's a job. You know, I'm getting paid money for this. They think because I'm going to be on TV or, or, or I'm fighting a, in a crowd that it, it's all for fun. It's all entertaining. It is, but except I'm getting beat up. I'm making money for this. It's still a job. I'm bringing home money so we can live. And and she never seen it that way, and I get it, but um, it 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 affected my personal life quite a bit that way. And then the gym, I was at the gym a lot. I didn't really have uh, I made time, didn't make time a lot for, for my family for certain things, like I said, or, or 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 moments. And I guess in a sense, maybe my personality is flirtatious. I'm not sure, but it did uh, it did affect me a little bit, <laughs> just a little. So. Hey, so I'm curious about the uh, the future of Ruben Galvin. Now, you did mention my boy Tommy Morrison, aka Tommy Gun, Tommy the Machine Gun. Now, yes, I- I'm I'm curious, man. Are you maybe in the hunt for your own Tommy Gun per se? If you were Rocky Balboa, I mean, are you? Would you be interested in training an up and coming fighter and putting them through the grill? I mean, you've you've seen it all. You've done it all. You've fought. 50 plus fights you've been all across the country all across the world and you've got a lot to to nurture a young up-and-coming star and how to put them in the right position to succeed would you ever do that or do are you doing that i was doing it for a little bit i was um i'm a personal trainer also uh one particular kid that i had and he was actually pretty decent and i wanted him to to get serious because he just was naturally athletic and naturally had the, the capability to become a fighter. And the bad part with him was he was a little heavy for his height. He was probably five, eight pushing one ninety two hundred. 200. Uh, that's unless you're Mike Tyson, who Mike Tyson was probably five, nine. They had him, they had him at five eleven, which is, he wasn't, I met him, um, in Vegas, I think one time, and he was good, about maybe an inch taller than me, two inches taller than me at the most. But unless you got that kind of power, um, you you're not going to be too good to get hit by those big guys. Anybody 200 pounds plus, you hit anybody. If you're 200 pounds, you hit someone right, you're going to knock them out. I don't care who you are. You hit them right, and you're 200 pounds plus, you're not going you're not going to out. But um, he was really good. Um, he came to. The, I would actually train him. On the side, he, he would pay for the classes, but on the side, I tell him, "Hey, man, I ain't charging nothing. Let's let's train, let's train, and and just stop coming." One time, I was calling, you know, I'd shoot him, shoot him a text or, or a phone call. But it's not. I mean, it's not fun, dude. It's not. I mean, obviously, I'm not telling you something you don't know, but I'm gonna say it anyway. It's not fun getting hit in the face. You know what I mean? And 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 it, and, it, and it, I'm not telling you, like I said, like something you don't realize. But to really get hit in the face, like you're getting punched, it hurts. And to constantly do that, and either you do or you don't. I mean, if you're dumb enough like me to do it, well, then you're going to get seen to do it. But my son, my son, well, my son and my daughter both grew up um, learning uh, boxing. I always taught them, put them on the pads, this and that. 
and my son was pretty decent and I might be biased because he's my son, but my son was getting pretty decent at it. And, um, he stopped, you know, wanting to come to the gym and I'm like, baby, how come you, how come you don't want to, how come you don't to come to the gym no more? And he said, I don't like getting hit. Enough, set, but enough for me. That's good enough. That I, I wasn't, you know, obviously I wanted him to, to fight a little bit. And I'm not saying turn pro, but maybe have a couple amateur fights, but him saying that I don't, I don't want, I don't like getting hit. It, it's not fun, you know, and, and people watch it on, 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 on TV. We all watch it and, and watch, you know, the main fight, but the, everything that really happens is, is behind closed doors in the gym. You get beat up, you, you know, some days, you know, like you were saying, you know, when you're losing, there's some, some days, some, some days you'll go in the gym and you'll get mopped up and I'm destroyed, headaches, bleeding, peeing blood. And like, okay, I'm going to go back tomorrow for more. Yes, I am. You know, so you just got, it's just either you are a fighter or you're not, you know what I mean? Either you, either you have it in you. And again, it's not about being a tough guy. It's about, do you want to do this or not? You know? And right. Where, right. So also all those people listening out there, uh, if you're a potential fighter and you're looking to get hit in the face frequently and you got some potential, give Ruben Galvin a call. He might, uh, he might find something for you to do. Uh, in the future, though, Galvin, what what else you got going on, man? I mean, what what do you um what do you aspire to do? I mean, what what do you what's next on the docket for Ruben Galvin? Um, as far as my personal life or just boxing, <laughs> boxing career wise, I mean, I know you've yeah. you've talked before off the air about a uh, possible podcasting or you know something like that. Yes, I I, uh, I, I actually want to. I'm re- I'm really interested in, in starting a a podcast show myself and. Um, I really like to interview some some people and, and just pick their brains about this and that. And, you know, I listen and, you know, I never really got into the podcast and stuff. So maybe a few months ago and I, I heard your guys' uh, podcast. And then the one I, I really liked recently was uh, the one about opioids. And, you know, that to me, that's what, what, what it's about. Like that's to me, that's real life. And I'm not taking nothing away from this, anybody else's podcast, but, what you guys covered there is it dude that's life like around here and i've heard i don't know the facts of it but i i've heard that um um opioids is taking over this this chicago land area you know um it's just it's not good you know and and for you to cover that you might have reached out to someone and it might make a difference to them hopefully help them well that's kind of what i want to do is like just interview interview people that that have gone through it um i have a friend of mine that had um went through it himself and he was addicted to it and 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 i witnessed it myself like i and i and i didn't deserve to see it but i did and he's come a long way and he's doing great you know what i mean so if i do a show which I want to do, he would probably be the first person I would have on the show and tell his story. And that's what I want to do is just get people to tell everybody has a story, you know, and, and, and I want to hear some people's get, let them, let other people hear it. it And I know it's cliche to say it, but if you can help one person, then, you know, our job is done. And, and I, and I feel like, you know, you guys are, are, actually helping people some people when you hear because that one stood out to me and i don't even do any drugs but that one i was impressed with that one and that one was very kudos to you guys that was that was a good show i was not saying the other ones weren't but that one stuck out to me i've gotten some feedback from some other people and they've you know they've said a few things uh really nice things about the podcast and and some things that they've they've taken away from it and and it it's it's really humbling in a way because you know you kind of sit here and you kind of put yourself out there and, you know, you're kind of talking and you wonder if there's anybody else listening on the other side and yeah. on the other side, you know, I'm sure that maybe those people are sitting there listening and they're like, I wonder if like this person knows that I'm listening. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's kind of, yeah, yeah, kind of funny. You go back to my boxing. It's like, you don't realize because, but then I come home, like, hey man, I seen you fight this time. And I seen, like, I fought, I had fought in uh Chavez or I'm um, sorry. I fought this dude, Mato Metal Paez, and we fought on uh, Solo Boxeo. It's on uh, uh, Telemundo. 
and at the time I fought uh, Paez, he was one of my favorite fighters coming up. And we fought a uh, scheduled 10 round fight in Arizona. And I fought him and I was just in awe because he was one of my favorite fighters growing up. And here, here I am in the ring with this dude and one of my favorite fighters of all time. And um, he's hitting me and I'm like, oh my God, this guy hit so hard. And he's already past his prime. So I'm thinking, holy cow, man, how hard this guy hit when he was in his prime. Anyways, at the time I had fought him, I learned later on that that was the highest watch fight on that on that channel up to that time i'm sure it's been surpassed since then but it, i was like wow like that many people watched it and i'm not saying they watched it because of me i'm sure a lot of them watched it the majority of them watched it because of him but um i was still a part of that when i when i came home shuttle area how many people came up to me and, and shook my hand and took a picture and wow you guys watched that huh oh yeah i watched it's amazing, like like what I'm saying is like you're saying, you don't even realize how many people you touch or you reach or 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 notice you or listening like you're saying to your show. And I don't even know if you guys even knew that I that I listened to your guys' show, but um, I'll be sitting here cleaning house and I'll put you guys on my um, Alexa and I'll put you on that speaker. And while I'm cleaning, I listen I listen to your guys' show. But, awesome, um, man. You guys kind of got me into it, so I really I enjoy you guys' show. I'm looking forward to the future ones, and I appreciate I I, pre- I appreciate you guys having me having me on the show today. Yeah, we're very appreciative having you on. You're all right, Galvin. You're all right in my book, brother. But that's all that we uh, that's all that we got for tonight, man. Uh, Mike, you got anything? Nah, nah. If you ever if you ever see Ruben Galvin in a shower, stay away from him. Please. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to get a, you don't want a left hook and then a, uh, you want a left hook and then a right jab and then get teabagged. And, and then you want somebody to knee you and knee you in the knee. Oh, fuck. <laughs> 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 well, uh, well, Ruben, thanks again for having a, for coming on, man. We're very appreciative. Um, I'd like to thank our listeners uh, for tuning in. Well, you know, we're very appreciative. Uh, we've got more coming down the pipe. And uh, that's all that we got for you tonight. 